A radial mask is the way to isolate and edit just one part of a raw image and it gives us tremendous editing control. Click on the mask icon and select the radial gradient. We can click and drag and create the bounding box manually. If you want to create a perfect circle, hold the shift key, click and drag. On the right hand side at the top of the panel we can see a slider where we can control the softness of the mask we've created from solid to extremely soft. I would suggest you start somewhere around about 30-35 and work from there. The bounding box we can see here can be moved and changed at any time. Click and drag within it to move it to a different location drag out the toggles to get the exact shape we want and we can rotate it too. A new set of sliders will open up on the right hand side for every single mask we create. Now here I want to affect the outer edges of my image. So I don't want to affect the area we can see by that red overlay. I need to go either up to this icon here and as you can see we can invert the mask or we can go up to the three little dots here and we'll find it there but probably the quickest way and the easiest way is to use the X key. So now I can go down to perhaps my exposure click and darken the image down on the outer edges leaving the center untouched. But remember, even after we've made those changes, we can adjust this in any way we like, and also the feather too. Look at the difference that this simple radial mask makes to this image. All it is, is a simple vignette, but what a difference. I often include the radial mask on practically every image I edit. Now with this image, perhaps we could target the main subject using the radial mask. So let's select it once again here. And on this particular occasion, I will hold that shift key and I'll drag out a nice circle. Now you'll notice that the bounding box has disappeared. We can bring that back with a touch of the V key. The V key just toggles the bounding box on and off. Maybe I'll just drag it down a little bit and also rotate it just a little bit. All I want to do here is to touch that X key to switch the mask around, invert it. Then I'm going to go to my exposure and just drop the exposure down just a touch on the outer edge. Now sometimes it's not uncommon to want to have a second radial filter or a second mask of another type. What we can do here is hit the J key. We can go to that blue dot with the white cross and select it, but the J key is quite quick and easy. So if I just double click on the picture surface, you can see that my bounding box is fitted right the way around to the edge. So if I wanted to invert that mask again with the X key, not only have I used the radial to focus down on the bird, but maybe I can use it just a little more around the edges. Not forgetting that at any time we can drop the size of the image down and we can actually break the edges with the bounding box. So we really do have ultimate control here. With this image, let's take a quick look at what all the masks are doing, finishing on the radial. As you can see on the right hand side, I've done all the global editing. Now I'm going to switch to my masks and you'll notice that quite a few masks have already been created. You'll also notice that we have the ability on the right hand side to turn the masks off. So I've turned them all off. So let's gradually go through them and I'll turn them on one at a time. There's a graduated mask at the top to hold the top in nice and solid and one for the base to do the same down there. 
We have a bit of highlight showing where the sun is still bright behind those clouds. So the sky highlight was dealt with using another mask. Finally, the boat was beginning to lose its sparkle. So an individual mask on the boat enables us to brighten that up. But finally, we've got a vignette here, which just finishes the job, created with the radial gradient. If you have any ideas for five minute video topics, please add them below or via our forum.